to my gardening vlog. This week, I show you how I transplant my cucumbers. I've got success with my tender fruits. I think I'm gonna have apricots, nectarines, and peaches this year. I sampled the first radish for the season. The winds kept blowing. And we have a little catch up with my flowering brassicas. It is fruits day on the moon phase calendar and I am back inside again. Yay! <laughs> I've got a bit of, well, there's a bit of sun coming through, but it is, well, I don't even know how to describe it now. I mean, they say that we get these April showers, but I don't, I, I really don't know whether we, I can call it showers because you go outside and then five seconds later, one minute, the sun's out and the sun's not, it's, it's not too bad actually. Um, and then it is just piddling down. So I've come inside because I want to talk to you about this fruit. Um, I am not going to take the risk of going outside, getting my head blown off and this poor little thing suffering. So these are cucumbers and these are my really early cucumbers that I do. Um, so these are called uh, Baby and they're an F1 and I've just thrown out the packet, which is really, really helpful, isn't it? Oh, dear. Not helpful at all. Um, they're only little cucumbers, tiny little things. The other ones that are really good are called mini munches or mini munch as well. They're another F1. I grew those last year and they're good too. So I kind of, it depends on when I can get the seeds and, and who I can get the seeds from. So they're the ones that I grow early because these do really well inside. The next one that I do is this one here. It's called Passandra. It's an F1, another F1. Um, and it's a great one for doing in the greenhouse as well. I don't really grow cucumbers outside. I just find that they don't do well. The ones that actually do do well outside have got really thick skin and I don't really like that because I like to eat the skin as well. So that's why I kind of stick with these varieties. Okay. So first off, I always plant my cucumbers in cells like this or in pots like this. These are like little 10 centimeter pots and in cells like this. But I usually do them in cells like this actually because I grow, I always sow more than one. And I've got three here left to transplant. Um, I didn't put these on heat at all, but I, behind me here, um, I've got grow tents and I put them under lights and that was warm enough for them to germinate and keep growing. And that's how leggy they are, which is to be expected, actually, uh, growing in grow tents under lights this time of year. So what I do is I then take them out and pop them on and I pop them then into this size container. Now, this was potted on, um, I would say about... 10 days ago and I've got another four of these exactly the same and as you can see this is not as leggy as the other ones uh I'm just going to go and get the um other another one that I've got in my green in my grow tent that's even better example it's a better example because it's not as long in the stem as this one well just but this is further along so that says to you, doesn't it, that I plant, when I transplant my cucumbers, I plant them deep. And there are so many um, divided uh, opinions out there about planting cucumbers deep. But there are certain little things you need to do in order to plant them deep properly and they don't die. So I'm going to do it with you. So the first thing is I get my seeds. I put them in the, I just fill up these six tray cells like this with a compost. Now the compost, I think, makes a difference as well. And I use the Levington compost that is for commercial growers. It's quite expensive, but um, 
I get fantastic success in all of my germination with that, along with my moon phase days. I always sow on a moon phase day, especially things like this that are expensive. These seeds are expensive. How much are these? Free. <laughs> oh, I mean, who knows? It's got that thing on their eye. Um, but they are expensive. So I always make sure that I put them in this really good compost. Uh, you can use a multi-purpose, but try not to get a multi-purpose that's too uh, big and chunky and woody uh, like I've got here. My multi-purpose that I then transplant on and pot on is quite chunky and woody. So I do that. I put them, they say to put the seeds on their sides. I mean, I do that anyhow. I just kind of stick them in and I wait and they come up, they germinate. If you want to, you can put them on heat. The thing with cucumbers is cucumbers, in order for them to grow and grow properly, they need heat. They need heat a lot more than tomatoes need heat. And they need different conditions to tomatoes as well. So really, they don't want to be dipping below 10 degrees Celsius. Just remember that when you start putting them outside into greenhouses or anything else. If the night time, I'm talking about nighttime temperatures here, if the nighttime temperature is getting below 10 degrees Celsius, wait and don't put them out because you will they'll be doing so well inside in your house or in your conservatory you then put them outside and they all they start sulking and suffering and probably dying as well they need the heat the other thing is they need a lot of light as well so that's another thing to remember so um let's go so what i do here is so when they get to this kind of stage here and i usually pot these out earlier because this has already got they're already up to their second true leaves so the true leaf the the um seed leaves are the little round ones see and then the true leaves come and they're the ones that look more like cucumbers uh let's get the one from the center here so this is Okay, so this is where my big um, farm-like fingers don't do so well because I have to be careful. When we trans, when I transplant cucumbers, watch the root ball. The root ball is the thing that, if anything, could make them not very happy. If you start faffing around with the root ball. Okay, now saying that, I have faffed around with the root balls before on cucumbers and they've been fine, but it's then because of what I've done um, with them afterwards. Uh, look, this is how long this is taking me to get this out because I need this. There you are. I mean, the only other thing that I'm really careful like this with is aubergines, but I don't do aubergines anymore. I get grafted plants. Okay, here we are. There it is. Hello. Now, I tip the pot to the plant and there we go. There it goes in. I mean, it's gone in a little bit kind of crooked. Then I just very gently, as you can see, standing up now, just give it a little bit of a nudge in. Not too much. Hello, there we are. There you are. That's your new little home. And then from there, I take this. I've got a truck behind me here and I take this and I put the compost in. I'm going to show you this compost in a minute because this compost is bone dry, completely dry. The only thing that was wet was the root ball of the cucumber. That is it. And I watered it yesterday. Okay, bone dry. In you go. Give it a little bit of a tap down. Might put a little bit more in. And that is my transplanted cucumber. So that then sits. I put it back under the lights again, and it stays like that for about two days. I do not give it any water at all. So under the lights, it's getting the warmth. It also is in a little tent, a zip up tent. So it's getting warm inside there as well. The tent kind of always sits. I've got a um, thermometer in there. It always sits at about 
12 not at night time about 12 13 degrees celsius and then it goes up during the day to about 18 and it will sit in there for about two days then when i can see that it hasn't died <laughs> i then will give it a tiny little bit of water not much i don't water from below i just water from above but a tiny little bit of water i'll just fill up that bit with water and that's it and leave it leave it leave it leave it cucumbers hate being over watered so that's why they're a little bit of a labor of love because in the summer you are actually better off giving them little and often rather than completely drowning them uh, that's a problem that when you have them in pots, because sometimes people put them in pots and then really water, 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 water like mad. The, the weather's not great. It's not really sunny. Um, so we don't have a great deal of evaporation. And then all of a sudden this amazing growing cucumber just flops and dies. And that's why they are a little temperamental. They are well worth growing, but I don't have a problem with them because I just do it this way every single time so these cucumbers are going to be kept inside so i'm going to keep them um on in my south facing window in the dining room they look really nice because i kind of like string them up um all over the place um in a trough and they will be fine I have to, if you want to be doing cucumbers and you want to be putting them out into the greenhouse, just remember that nighttime temperature. If it dips below 10 degrees Celsius, it's going to be way too cold for them. They might sit there for a while and, you know, and you might think, oh, I think I got away with this. And then all of a sudden they might die. The other thing is also the light situation. I mentioned it. Um, when I do these, I put these as high up and as um, close to the window as possible because they love light. So if you're going to put them again in a greenhouse and you're going to put them in a tub on the ground in the greenhouse, they might suffer because the light is not as good as the top of the greenhouse. So you're better off having staging and putting them on the staging up in the greenhouse as well. And that is why um, these ones I am not going to sow until the end of the month. They'll get away very, very quickly because these ones are the ones that I'm going to be putting in my greenhouse on the allotment. I The greenhouse on the allotment is dedicated to high humidity plants. So cucumbers, melons mainly are going in there. They don't like the same conditions as tomatoes and peppers or chilies, which need um, not as high humidity. So they need more drier um, uh, climate. So that's I'm lucky that I've got more than one greenhouse. Also, the, these ones are going in the ground because they do much better in the ground than they do in pots. I tried them in pots and they don't really work. So that is my cucumber sowing on fruits day on the moon phase calendar another thing i want to show you on fruits days and i hope you can <laughs> hope you can hear me i've got my microphone very close to me is i'm holding on to this beauty here because uh oh it's windy again oh sorry now this is my apricot tree and this is one of two apricot trees I've got. The other one is behind here. There it is. It's looking a bit worse for wear, that one, because I nearly lost it a couple of years ago and I nearly got rid of it. But then I thought, oh no, I can't do that because this apricot, a couple of years ago, this apricot was fantastic. I had so much fruit on it. And then, um, yeah, we had a bad year. Um, so, I keep these apricots out all year round. They are up against my big greenhouse here and they're on a kind of raised uh, bed with gravel and I keep them out all year round. I don't bring them in at all. I don't do what I do with my peach and my nectarine which is brought in. And I kind of always do this and hope for the best. Hope I'm going to get pollination because apricots have a tendency to um, flower and blossom really early in the year. So I did the same this year and thought, okay, well, you know, even if they have a year off fruiting, 
good on them. But um, I have apricots, which is so fantastic. Oh, they're so lovely. All I gotta, I have to hope now that the wind doesn't kind of blow the tree and snap the tree, which I don't think it should. Uh, and I've actually got fruit on both of my trees. I reckon I've, I'm gonna have about maybe 10 on that one and maybe 10 on this one. So I could get like 20 fruits, which is fantastic. I'll show you what they, will, what they look like. And this here, which is um, which blossoms and flowers a little bit later. This is my plum tree called Stanley. Now I haven't had any fruit on this yet because it is actually just a small tree. It's a bit of a teenager, but it, could, it looks as though I could get fruit on this as well this year. And next to it, I actually have a green gauge as well and I could get fruit on that. So I am thinking, fingers crossed, behind me, which I don't think you can see, but you can see that thing just there. That is my fig. And this fig tree does so well. It's up against the garage. It's squashed in to a little area and it has the little fruits on it that are going to fruit this year. It's fabulous. We have to hack it back every single year because um, it is coming in the back garden through the gate and this is where all my clients come in. So uh, yeah, it does get kind of hacked back. But I am very happy about the fruit. And in my little emerald greenhouse, I also have fruit coming on my nectarine that I self-pollinated, which is great. The other day there was a little bee in there. There, you know, I leave I do leave the door open and the louvers open at the back for the pollinators to get in. But yeah, I'm getting fruit on that as well. So all is good. Now let's just kind of try and get out of this wind. Eee. So for Roots Day on the Moon Phase calendar, um, there's a couple of things that, hang on, let me just pull this down a little bit. There we are, that's a bit better. Um, there's a couple of things that I want to get transplanted out. So this is my transplanting on a Moon Phase calendar day. I do my sewing, I didn't have anything to sew. Um, because I've done it already and I'm just transplanting out. Now I have got a lot of radish at the moment and here I am with my trusty dibber. So I have one succession of radish in my big veggie pod, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. This is my next succession of radish and these radish are called Scarlet Globe. Let me just get some out here of the cells. They are virtually rooting through the bottom of my container-wise containers. There's your root ball. And I have multi-sewed these. I have multi-sewed four per cell. And I'm just using the dipper here in my veggie pod to make, well, holes about two inches apart. When I plant them, I'll show you in a minute, I plant them very, very deep. And I push them right down so that the compost or the soil, wherever you're gonna plant them, is right up to where the leaves start. So, um, I like to plant my radish in my veggie pods. And I like to finish sowing my radish. Ooh, my last lot of sowing is gonna be be end of April, probably beginning of May, I'll do my last um, sowing of radish and then I stop for the summer because I find that radish is way too difficult to look after in the summer. Um, it has problems with, my main problem is flea beetle and that's why I put them here in the veggie pod. Because veggie pods, I don't know whether you have had a veggie pod before, but it is just essentially a raised bed high up. <laughs> A raised bed high up. It's on a stand. I've got mine on wheels and um, then it has a lid over the top. Now the lid is either, you can either get a, a, this kind of meshy stuff here or you can also get a frost cover and the frost cover is just polythene. You can either take the mesh off and use the frost cover by itself and let the light in or you can actually use this um, 
mesh with the frost cover over, which is what I usually do because it just helps increase the temperature. And I'm sorry about the wind, but it is windy yet again. This whole week, whoop, here we go, has been, I'll be knocked out by the veggie pod lid, um, has been just windy all week. So I've really struggled with filming. I'm hoping that my microphone here is cutting out quite a lot of the um, wind. Anyhow, as I'm talking to you, I'm going to get on with this because I've got quite a lot of these to put in. Yeah, so that's veggie pod. Um, I used to put them in my, um, here at home in the kitchen garden, and I used to kind of interplant them amongst other crops, you know, like spinach or lettuce, but I was finding that the flea beetle was so bad and also the slugs as well. Um, some people say that wood lice like to eat, um, uh, what do you call it, radish, but what I find is as soon as a slug makes a hole in a radish, that's when the wood lice kind of get hold of them as well. Um, I don't actually find the wood lice uh, start eating the radish. I usually find it's, it's slugs or snails. Um, these are a little big, actually. I've let these get a little bit large, but I have another succession that I've got um, in the greenhouse behind you. That's my big greenhouse behind you. And that has also got some turnips in. So they will be going in the veggie pot as well because turnips, again, being part of the brassica family, um, the flea beetles love those as well. So let me just continue putting these in like this. So I've multi-sowed this time four per cell. Uh, not all four of them are going to become a proper nice round radish because some of them just tend to be a little bit kind of stringy. But at least I have put four in. The ones that I've got in the other veggie pod I sowed much earlier. And so I did three in those. And again, not all of them are going to be big red radishes, some of them are going to be stringy. That's how they kind of work. I never broadcast like a whole row of radish because I just find that I waste too much seed. I always do them here in the modules as I'm doing here. And then I just can, you know, plant them out wherever I want. They do tend to take up a little bit of space because, you know, if I plant in modules like this, I have to keep them somewhere. So they do tend to keep, you know, take up a little bit of space, but it doesn't really matter. I don't really care because they grow so fast. And especially at this time of year, if you sow now, you're going to have them growing really, really fast. And um, yeah, then we would have some radishes. The other thing, the other reason why I don't really use radish in the summer is because, um, they tend to get a little bit kind of um, really, really spicy and sometimes they go a bit spongy as well. And there are plenty of other things that you can have in the summer that have got crunch because I like radish mainly. Well, I do like the taste, but I like it for the texture as well. I like the crunch of it. And there, like I said, there are plenty of other things that um, you can have in the summer that are crunchy, like, you know, cucumbers and if you're into cucumelas, maybe them as well. Uh, so let me just show you how I plant these radishes. Make some holes here with my dibber. A dibber is a great thing. If you can get a dibber, get a dibber because they are really, really good. And as you can see, I've also got some um, spring onions in here, but I don't tend to do uh, spring onions in the veggie pod because I have a problem with black aphid. They do like the conditions in the veggie pod. And so therefore, um, I don't really do them often. I just threw these in at the end of the season last year. So here we are. That's them. There's the hole. And then I push down really, really far and bury it all the way up to the leaves. You can't see any stalks at all. That's how I do them. And here are the other radish that I've got in the big veggie pod. These were, so the ones that I just um, put in were sown on the 16th of February. These were sown 
on the 5th of January. And these are Cherry Bell. So these are another favourite of mine. Really lovely radish. Um, let's just have a look. When you sow radish are quite early in the year, they tend to put on quite a lot of leaf growth. But if you like, you can actually eat these leaves as well in salads. Um, they're pretty yummy. I mean, I'm not a huge radish leaf eater because I've got other things that I can eat that I'm always growing. There we are. A little radish. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And I can see there's a little slug wanting to get hold of it as well. So I'm just going to give it a wash and then I'm going to try it. Here we go. Mm. Oh, wow. Focus. It's focusing. Mm. You know, when you eat radish, the first, mm, 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 mm. Sorry, look at my hair. I look like Elvis. I have a quiff. The first radish that you eat for the year is absolutely delicious. They are still, they get, the, you still get this kind of spiciness about it, but they are so crunchy and they get this I don't know that you can't compare it. You know those radishes that you get in the bags in the supermarket where they take the tops off and they're just like, you know, you don't know where they've come from and how long they've been sitting there. They don't have the juiciness that you have, that you get from a radish that you grow yourself. Oh, they're so nice. Now, now I'm, oh, oh yeah. I was gonna say, I'm gonna go looking for more. Look. Another one. Oh yeah, that's for me as well. That's what I did on Roots Day this week. <laughs> uh, today it is blowing a gale. It's Flowers Day on the Moon Phase calendar and I've come over to the allotment um, to check on my flowering brassicas. And I've got two lots of flowering brassicas over here. I've got this lot here in the greenhouse and I've also got another lot out in a bed that was started in a little polytunnel. Um, and then I took the polytunnel off and now it's got mesh over the top of it. That's where I'm going next. But I just wanted to have a look at these first because it's a bit blowy outside and a little bit raining. So I'm just waiting for the rain to pass before I go over there. Okay, so these flowering brassicas are calabrese, which is the broccoli and also um, some purple cauliflowers called graffiti. At this moment in time, I've only got the purple cauliflowers on the go uh, because they're the ones that I grow at this time of year. And um, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about my staggering sewing and why I stagger sew. Um, so, I mean, the main thing is obviously that I've got crops regularly. That's one of the main things. And the other thing also is it's, a lot of it is experimentation as well. So with this change in climate that we're getting and things are getting a lot wetter and a lot milder, Things are changing, my sewing um, times are changing. So I'm finding now that I kind of need to sew stuff every month just to document when things will be harvested, when things are gonna to go to seed. So all of those rules and regulations you read in books nowadays, throw it out the window because <laughs> with what's going on now uh, with the climate, I don't think anything's going to work anymore. So it is a really good time to experiment. 
All right, so what I've got in here is, my Calabrese is called Marathon, it's an F1. I grow this all year round and I find that it gives me the best um, heads of broccoli or Calabrese and also the best yields as well. So that's why I grow that. The other thing that I've got here are my graffiti cauliflowers, like I mentioned, which are the purple ones. And I find that they do well well, pretty much all year as well. In the winter and, in, and later on in the year, I will start sowing some more white ones as well. But the great thing about purple cauliflowers is you the curds actually get better in colour if you let the sun get on them. Most of the time when you do cauliflowers, you have to kind of um, cover them over with either leaves or some kind of netting or a mesh. Um, and that keeps the curd or the head really nice and white. If it, go, if it is um, open and the sunshine hits it, it goes a kind of dirty brown colour. Um, but the purple ones, you don't have that issue. And that's another reason why I grow them. So as the sun hits them, they go even more purple and it doesn't affect the taste at all. So um, in here as well, I have got um, my Komatsuna, and this is the Komatsuna that I was having problems with, with the holes in them. And you know how I said to you that I was pretty sure, like nearly 100% sure it wasn't slugs? Well, have a look at this. There it is, sitting in there, enjoying itself, but not for much longer. So I think it was a few things. I think it was slugs. I think it was these little weevil things. And now, because it's getting warm in here, uh, my Komatsuna is starting to go to seed or starting to flower, which is fine by me because I do like the little flowers on the Komatsuna. But any Asian green now, especially with this kind of mild weather, is going to go to seed. You haven't done anything wrong. Um, it's just that time of year. It just happens. I am hoping that my um, calabres and my cauliflowers in here don't start bolting. <laughs> I mean, who knows? They might and they might not. Um, so I sowed these in October last year. They um, sat in the greenhouse in 11 centimetre containers and really did nothing. They had a little bit of a root system on them, and, but they did nothing. And then I planted these out um, beginning of February, I think I planted them out. So far, so good. I had a really good look at them just to see what's going on in there and it's only leaf production so far. So that's okay for me. These I want, well, <laughs> don't we want things ready when we want them ready? But I'm hoping that these will be ready at the end of May. That was my kind of goal, May, beginning of June. But we shall see about that. So these are gonna be kind of like going into my, what the, the hungry gap, what they call the hungry gap. Um, I have, and then I've also got one, yes, another two lots of cauliflowers and one lot of calabres on the go at home. But I will show you that in a, in a minute when I go back. So um, let's go and have a look at the ones outside and see, they actually look about the same size as the ones in here. But I think it's because I'd put my little polytelon over the top of them. Um, so let's go and have a look at them. I need to take the netting off and I need to get down and do a little bit of weeding. So here are the um, cauliflowers and the calabres or broccoli that I've got outside and um, they're doing quite well. There's quite a few slug issues here, which is to be expected I suppose because it's a lot damper. Um, and all I'm really doing is I'm going in between them with my little claw thing that I've got here which I absolutely love. I've got two of these. So I, this is from Kent, uh, Kent and Stowe. Um, it's really solid, it's a great one. And the other one at, that I've got at home is from um, Wolfgarten, I think it is the company. Um, and again, fantastic, I love these. Because you can get in amongst everything. I've also got a big one of these with a long handle from Kent and Stowe. 
um, and it's very, very good as well. I like using it rather than a, um, a hoe because I just find that it breaks the soil up really nicely. So um, yeah, slug issues, quite a few. I can't really see them on these ones here. Uh, but they are definitely, and I think I've got some snail issues as well, because they're definitely kind of biting into the stalks. And um, yeah, so that's this side. I've done this side. Now what I'll do is I'll go on the other side and take the netting off there. I've got this, excuse me, I've got this netted because, mainly because of the pigeons, because the pigeons get everything here. They must be extremely hungry. No matter what you keep open, the pigeons will have a field day. And they do like the brassicas, the pigeons. So, um, yeah, these were sown exactly the same time. I've actually got the tags here. These were sown on the 7th of October. So this exactly the same time as the ones in the greenhouse. I actually, I sowed quite a few. Um, and that's why I then missed the sowing. Um, let me think when my next lot of sewing was. I have to check on that. I have to go home and have a look, but I'll show you that um, uh, in a minute when I go back and we'll have a look at my stagger sewing. I know I missed one succession of um, the Marathon Calibres because I've got so many and I've got two successions of the Graffiti Cauliflowers. So I'll just get on here and continue, close this up, open the other side, and um, yeah, before it starts raining again. Yes, I still have seedlings in here in the dining room, south facing dining room. Actually, I've got quite a lot going on here in the dining room still because the weather's not as good yet to put my peppers and all that kind of business out. But that's not why I'm here. I am here to show you the successions that I've got of my flowering brassicas because of Flowers Day. So I've come back from the allotment and I showed you what I had over there. So those were sown in October. Those are, like I said, I'm hoping that they are going to be ready late spring, fingers crossed, if not before, <laughs> who knows. Then my next succession, and I'm not doing calibres in this next succession, is this one here. So I want you to look at not the top part of the tray, because that's tatsoi, but the bottom part of the tray. So that is my purple graffiti cauliflowers again. So I've got, I've got eight of those. Those were sown in February, beginning of February, 11th of February. And... And those particular um, cauliflowers are going to be then um, hopefully harvested in the summer. They're um, normally kind of February time is a good time to sow cauliflowers actually if you want them in the summer. And I don't have many, like I said, I've only got eight here. And, um, you know, they, they should be fine. They didn't need grow lights at all. Um, I've just had them here. I started them in a little pot like so and pricked them out and I've put them in here and they've just been growing nicely. Now these ones are here because I'm taking these out to the greenhouse and they're gonna continue growing in the greenhouse. And then once they're ready, and once I'm very happy with the root system, I am going to plant these out directly. Um, unless I put them in 11 centimetre pots first. I have to have, to have a think about that. But I want these to go in um, sometime in April. So I'm hoping that they will grow quickly, and they probably will actually grow quickly now. That is my next lot. So that's that. Then my next lot of flowering brassicas are here. And these were sown, let's deal with the um, cauliflowers first. Here is a next lot of graffiti cauliflowers. Now I don't have many coming up here because I didn't sow many, I don't want many. Um, and these were sown on the 19th of March. The other thing that I sowed um, on that date were these, and these are my Marathon Calabres. I've got quite a few in here because I want quite a few actually. And these um, uh, 
flowering brassicas sown in mid-March, I'm hoping to harvest at the end of July. So they're, they're kind of my real summer flowering brassicas. Um, and then after that, I then do another batch in May. Um, and that is then for my autumn and winter kind of harvest. But I start switching varieties then. I will do a few graffitis because I like the graffitis. And then I'm going to start doing Romanesco because Romanesco does really well in the autumn. And um, they will then be harvested. I might do a few calabrese because, like I said, I do calabrese and I do graffi purple graffiti nearly all year round. But just for an extra flowering brassica, I'll throw in the Romanesco. Then... Later on, my winter crop cauliflowers so I will be sown in June and I don't really do um, white cauliflowers much. I do sometimes, it just depends if I, if I fancy some, some or not. I kind of like to then go on to purple sprouting broccoli because um, you can get purple sprouting broccoli um, very early, mid and late. And I, I kind of like to go into purple sprouting broccoli. But if you're a real cauliflower lover, then you can also sow in June as well. And that's how I stagger my sowings of my flowering brassicas. We do, like I said, we do like to have a cauliflower. You know, in the summer, it's really lovely having cauliflower like for crudite. You can put on the barbecue as well. It's, it's a great veg, absolutely love it. I always sow it the same way. I sow it in little pots like this, or I will sow it in um, a six. If I've got lots of brassicas to sow, here I'll show you, I've got a, an actual tray here with quite a few brassicas in it. In it. And they're always a six cell tray like this. I always sow. These are my um, uh, red cabbage, my Brussels sprouts, my um, kalets. That's my next succession of those, those brassicas. And then I prick them out. I prick them out into these size trays like this. And then depending on what time of the year it is, normally in the colder months, I will then put them into a, um, a pot like this by themselves. And uh, then I put them in the ground. And that's how I do my sowing of um, flowering brassicas. So that's Flowers Day on the Moon Phase calendar. So I have retreated to my living room because of the weather. I am Susie B from Susie B Living and thank you very much for watching me this week on my gardening vlog. There's lots more to come. I will be uploading my what's happening next week in my moon phase schedule and I do it on a Sunday night and a, and a Wednesday night as well. And um, I, hope, <laughs> I hope you've had a good gardening week as I have had. I will see you later. Bye. <laughs>